ladies and gentlemen, from the studios in the wrestling capital of the South, it's another exciting edition of the Binge Buster Show. All right, everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of the Binge Buster Show. It's been a while since we've had an episode due to... Um, holidays and all that kind of stuff, but we are back. It is a new year, a new season of the Binge Buster Show. And right now, without further ado, I'm going to bring on my tag team partner, cohort, co-conspirator. I'm talking about none other than Red Hot Tim Blaze. Tim, how are you doing this evening? Uh, Tony, Tony, Tony. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Man, I am doing good. It has been a while since we've done our show, and I've really missed talking with you and talking about uh, all the great, um, great, great stories of pro wrestling. Uh, I know you, you and I are plugging it hard there leading up to WrestleCade. Uh, WrestleCade has came and gone. A huge show, a huge success, and uh, fun times. And uh, I know we talked about that a little bit on our last show, but... Uh, since uh since last time I saw you, what you been up to? Well, um, actually, you know, working on WrestleCade. Uh, to be honest with you, <laughs> uh, starts all over again. Again, uh, Tracy Myers and, and the team uh, start automatically uh, on the next year, and uh, already got a really good idea of uh, what we're going to try to do starting out. So, oh, that sounds good. I know. Uh, I know the fans are already ready for uh, for WrestleCade. I, I know I've I've listened to a few podcasts and man, so many people have had so many stories uh, from WrestleCade. And uh, man, it, it was just a great event. I was glad to be part of that. Looking forward to doing it again next year. And and uh, man, it's just a great time. Yeah, it's always a, a good time. It's always a busy time, and it's a uh, it's a it's a three days that I always look forward to all year long. It's my it's my Christmas, so to speak. So Christmas always comes early if it's the Blaze Man family. So uh, that's uh, definitely uh, something to look forward to. That's for sure, Tony. Yeah, WrestleCade was a fun time. Um, so uh, talking about WrestleCade, uh, what was what was probably one of your favorite things to take away from from that big show? Well, probably the biggest thing was the it was like the George South weekend. I mean. Seeing Muda there, and then of course George accepting the Open Challenge, and then the next day winning the title, the AML title I'm speaking of, uh, was just a tremendous thing to to witness. And I was uh, glad I was there ringside for uh, both things that happened. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, just I saw George after the show, and just you're know, just seeing the glow on his face, man. And it, 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 it really uh, it, it 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 kind of brought me back to when we had George South on uh, one of our episodes and how he talked about, you know, he was one of the first guys to wrestle the great Muda when he first came to, you know, to, to Jim Crockett promotions. Yeah. So it came full circle for him there. So that, yeah. that was just, that was great. And I think that, uh, you know, he don't, he don't need a belt, but he deserves to carry one. He deserves to re- represent a company and, uh, you know, he's in my mind. He's one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, George, George is. Um, you know, I tell. I know you and I have said this to ourselves, and uh, we'll say it again. But uh, you know, George has taught so many people uh, in the wrestling industry that that you and I have seen and came across. Um, I mean, George is, has has really had a hand in uh, grooming a lot of the big talent that that we see on TV now. And of course, all the ones that 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 you and I have have been able to uh, to know on the independent scene here in the Carolinas. Yeah, I mean, even the um, the ones that, like I say, that, that you were talking about, the ones that are on TV now, uh, like I mean, first one that pops in my mind is Cedric Alexander. You know, it makes me proud to know that you know George had a hand in training him and seeing him every week on the on the big screen just 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 makes my heart proud uh to know you know that uh there was something there that also had a had a touch in as in life as well and that's george training me back in 92 so it it just uh makes me 
so proud to see those guys on TV like that. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, 2020 is, is here. Uh, it's a new year, a new start uh, for everybody, but it's also a an ending for some. And as you know, our uh, our good friend, um, talking about none other than handsome Jimmy the Boogie Woogie Man Valiant, is uh is is coming up on his final farewell tour. He is finally gonna lace up the boots one last time for one more one year tour. And uh, Tim, what do you think about that? I mean, think think about you know, talk about touching people. Jimmy Valiant has been around you know longer than than you and I both been alive and. And he's been over everywhere he's went, you know? Oh, my God. The wars that I had with Jimmy Valiant, you know, from 94 to 2001 alone. I mean, just that blows my mind. But the, the, the battles he's had in 50 years, think about the matches that that man had. I mean, multi, multi I mean, you know, in the 70s, him, him and his brother, uh, Luscious Johnny, they ruled the WWWF, uh, winning the titles and hanging on to them for a very long time. And then, you know, he went to Memphis, uh, got over there. But, you know, I, I, and that's probably just because of me, but I, I think Jimmy Valiant's most uh, successful run was there in Jimmy Crockett Promotions here in the Carolinas. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. When he came to Crockett Promotions, he was over huge. I mean, he was over so big that he could run – cards by himself as the main event. I mean, he came in and it was an overnight success. Yeah, I mean, there there's definitely no no one better uh, than a handsome Jimmy Valiant. Now, I'm excited, and, and speaking of Jimmy Valiant, um, coming up this Saturday uh, for the NAWA, uh, they they run shows up there in uh, around the Morganton area. and, and uh, But uh, Jimmy Valiant is going to be there this weekend and a huge six-man tag team war. Uh, Jimmy Vatt has, has got a couple guys with him, and they're going to be taking on a tag team known as the Cartel. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to be there and be able to see that. And I'm going to do my best to uh, to get a little interview with Jimmy uh, so that when we do our next podcast, we'll uh, be able to have, we'll have a little sound bite from Jimmy um, and uh, talk, talk to him about what, what he feels like uh, or what it feels like to be on, on the, his final, final farewell tour uh, in the pro wrestling business. Oh, yeah, that would be great. I mean, the Boogie Boogie Man, Jimmy Valiant, a legend in our sport, a Hall of Famer in our sport, somebody that, again, I look at as a personal friend for the last, you know, 25 years, and it's just somebody that, Really, really deserves a great fan farewell. Well, uh, from the fans, uh, everybody needs to show up to this last hurrah. Maybe the last chance you ever get to see the Boogie Boogie Man Jimmy Valiant in action ever again. Again, uh, and that's this weekend, Tony. I- I'd like to join you myself. I mean, you're selling me on this thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, Tim, it's, it's going to be huge. Um, you know, the, the, the NAWA, they, uh, you know, they're they uh, are, are a nice wrestling company that runs shows um, in the Morganton area. Um, I know, you know, over the years, you and I have 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 worked a, a lot of shows around that area. Um, you know, the western part of North Carolina is a huge, huge wrestling bed uh, for for fans to want to come out. Uh, I mean, it seems like every little town that's ran around that area, um, it, it packs out. The, the people love their pro wrestling up there. Yeah, I think uh, I've had a few shows there in Morganton myself through the years, and it's always been a great town. Uh, so this weekend, the Boogie Woogie Man Farewell Tour, the, what is the Boogie Jam 2020, Boogie, gonna happen. Boogie Jim 2020. He's doing the six man tag, and and you know I I actually called him the other night, and he's telling me uh, that that you know the last Boogie Jam he was at, he uh, took the mask of the assassin. Um, so now he's talking about you know if this is his last hurrah, uh, he might end up taking the mask of those uh, tag team up there known as the Golden Gladiators. Ooh, I'd like to know who that is. I know they've been around for a while there, and I've, I've heard a lot on them. I'd really like to find out. You know, that, that'd be a great night for that for the fans if he'd done that. 
that would be awesome. Yeah, that that, that that's what he said. He said, Tony, he said, uh, you and I have been friends a long time. He said, you know, the boogie woogie man likes to tell you, uh, and make promises and 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 not and not be able to keep them. He said, but you know, uh, the last boogie jam I'm doing, he said, it'd be nice to finally get those masks from those golden gladiators. So. Who knows, uh, you know, fans. If you want to find out who the who the who the Golden Gladiators are, or get you know finally get a last picture uh, with the Jimmy Jimmy handsome Jimmy Valiant, uh, you need to come out to that NAWA show this coming Saturday uh, at the uh, Burke County Fairgrounds, and uh, you know, and and NAWA puts on a family friendly show, um, so don't don't be afraid to come out there and you know think there's gonna be you know, naked women running around. Now there will be half naked guys in the wrestling tights. I assure you of that. But, um, but you know, as far as family entertainment, it's definitely there with NAWA. Well, I hear a lot of good things about NAWA. And so I'm positive that that show is going to be a, a tremendous success. Uh, you talk about having the last photo opportunity with Jimmy Vine, maybe the last photo opportunity with the, uh, gladiator assassins there. Yeah, yeah, that that that's true, Tim. I mean, I, I know uh, the the Golden Gladiators, and you know they're part of this group called the Cartel, and uh, they have pretty much ran rapid through the um, NAWA over the last few years. They uh, were tag team champions uh, multiple times. They, you know, they 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 their track record speaks for itself. Even even our our good friend George South um, has teamed up with them several times. And uh, man, you know, it, it's definitely a a, 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 a team to 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 uh, reckon with uh so i'm i'm anxious to see what the um you know how, how my good friend jimmy Vatt and his team uh pair out this this coming saturday yeah one of them was very very familiar i'd never seen any of them without their mask on but uh again uh that'll be fun to see if jimmy Vatt can come through with taking those masks as he told the fans that he would do and uh I look forward to seeing that, man. I might uh, have to make me a, a, a drive there and have me a road trip this weekend. Yeah, it, it'll be definitely be a fun time. Uh, now, Tim, changing subject a little bit, uh, I know uh, you probably be on the phone with our other good friend talking about uh, the most downloaded podcast guest on the Binge Buster Show in 2019. I'm talking about none other than Black Bart. Yeah, I have, and uh, Black Bart since then has done a shoot interview uh, with Title Match. I got them uh, hooked up together, and so they look for 30 episodes to come up of Black Bart on that as well. Uh, the first episode's already up. It's uh, Title Match Wrestling on YouTube. Uh, you can look them up. It's free. Uh, uh, this one's called Black Bart Tells How Ric Flair Split His Throat. So uh, it's a good episode, so... Uh, Black Bart, yeah, he's a good guy. I've talked to him, and uh, he, he really likes the Binge Buster show, and he's ready to come back anytime we're ready to do it. I am ready to get him back on. Matter of fact, I'd like to try to get him on next week's episode um, if we can. Uh, hopefully we, we can get that worked out, and, and our schedules and his schedules will, will work out now that all the holidays are gone and, and uh, it's a, the new year has started. And um and the the binge buster show fans i don't know if you can tell any difference in the sound but we have gotten new equipment and uh i'm excited about this uh about this mixer i have um and uh man it's it's, i'm just i'm just moving forward with the binge buster show and uh, tim and i are going to be bringing uh you know hot guests the rest of the year and uh it's going to be a good time that's it, and then you can play our theme music anytime you want to. We go to commercial anytime you want to. It's it's all it's all a great thing I'm hearing about here. So as a the matter, Buster show is bigger and better in 2020, and uh, and we're ready to do it. I'm excited, and as a matter of fact, talking about a commercial, here is a commercial coming up right now for the uh, upcoming NAWA show, the Boogeyman Jam 2020. Saturday, Saturday, January 4th, 2020, NAWA Pro Wrestling presents the final Boogeyman Jam featuring WWE Hall of Famer, Mid-Atlantic Wrestling legend, Jimmy Boogie Woogie Man Valiant in a six-man tag. This will be the final appearance of Jimmy Valiant in NAWA, so come out and get your autographs and photos with this living legend. 
Also, come see NAWA Heavyweight Champion Thomas Extreme versus King Craig Classic. NAWA Tag Team Champions Money and Power versus the Burke County Boys. Big Country versus Next to Perfect Adam James. Dre White and Max Carnage versus the Perfect Storm. Ladies action as Casey Fox takes on Ella Envy. Johnny Ryder versus Cam Jackson. A lumberjack match between Jailbird and Tim Hunter. Plus much more. Be there at the Burke County Fairgrounds, 145 Boss Road, Morganton, North Carolina. Doors open at 6 p.m. Wrestling starts at 7 p.m. Adult tickets $10. Kids 6 to 12, $5. Five and under are free. Come see the best live family friendly pro wrestling in Western North Carolina. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Wow. I'm telling you, Tim, wow. it's going to be a happening show. I'm ready. I'm ready for the Jailbird versus Tim Hunter in a lumberjack match, man. I want to see a lumberjack match. I haven't seen one in a while. I hadn't either, Tim. I mean, I'll tell you, lumberjack. I, and I'll tell you, Tim, talking about some of the old, or some of mine and your old matches, uh, one, one of the most brutal matches I was ever in before was a lumberjack strap match. Have you ever been in any of those kind of matches? Yeah, I took on Les Parker in Burlington, North Carolina in 1996 in a lumberjack strap match. Lightning Les. Sure did. One of the most painful matches you could be in. Man, I know with those lumberjack strap matches, you you you, you don't know where you're getting hit from. You know, it's from all sides. Yeah, yeah. and it's crazy. And all kinds of different belts, too. Oh, They're yeah. All different. Yeah. I mean, I, you think just little plastic ones wouldn't hurt, but the, you know, they'll burn you like a razor blade. Man, I I remember I was in a, um in a lumberjack strap match one time uh, against uh a, 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 a one of the guys I was, I trained, and uh, man, I don't know what this what this one wrestler on the floor had, but man, I I thought instead of hit me with a belt, I thought he hit me with a with a briar patch. I'm telling you, man, my leg was was burning for two weeks. And if I could have, if I would have known who hit me, I would, have, I would have shot on him so hard. It was like, was like man, lighten up over there, brother. Yeah, he was belting it up, brother. Yeah. I tell you, probably had a barbed wire belt or something on you. Who I'm, tell? I'm telling you, it was crazy. Um, so Tim, what's uh, what's what's new in your life? What 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 has Red Hot Tim Blaze been up to since Wrestlecade? Besides, uh, putting together all these great, um. Uh, connections with black Bart and all these different wrestlers that you have such connections with over the years. Well, I just, uh, just a lot of, uh, AML action going on. You know, we're working on the big fifth anniversary January show, uh, at the Winston Salem, uh, annex. So that'd be a good, uh, time. Uh, not actually in the annex, but in the garden center there at the, uh, Winston Salem annex. Uh, so that's going to be a big time show fifth anniversary. Uh, we've got some shows coming up that's going to involve some uh, WWE wrestlers that's uh, been re- released lately, and I won't go any further than that, but that'll be a good time. Uh, so working on WrestleCade and, uh, of course, uh, for next year, getting the headliner involved uh, so we can get that announced pretty soon here in uh, January or February. So a lot of things going on right now. Um, I'm actually uh, switched up a little bit in positions, too. It's Still ring announcing, but I'm still uh, involved a lot more with the AML on the advertising end of it. So I'm getting sponsorships and things of that nature. So that's uh, really exciting for 2020. Uh, so a lot going on in the AML and the Russell Cade family uh, right now. I tell you, I'm I'm excited to um, to, to uh, see what 2020 is going to hold uh, for uh, for pro wrestling. I mean, uh, you know. There, there, there's just so much wrestling going on from all parts of the United States. Um, and, you know, good friends of ours are doing so well. Um, you know, the Rockland Express is getting a second and third run. Uh, I, I think it's so wonderful that for those guys. I mean, they, they really, uh, they, they've earned it for sure. Um, and I know they're at WrestleCade. Uh, Rick and Robert were uh, part of a, of a huge six-man. And, uh, man, everywhere, everywhere they go, they're over. Yeah, they're definitely, uh, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, they'll, uh, live forever. I'm like, uh, you know, rock and roll and never die. Uh, it's just, uh, two guys that are super nice. Um, I'm individually friends with both of them, uh, collectively. 
uh, again as well. Uh, when they come into town, it's always a, a pleasure uh, to be around Ricky and Robert. Uh, it always has. I've been around them now for, uh, again, the last 25 years. And uh, it's just been something that, um, especially Robert, I think, more than Ricky. Uh, when I get around Robert, it's really kind of a, a bond. And we have that bond, you know, going back all the way to Burlington, uh, the night that uh, we defeated the Rock and Roll Express, me and my partner. And it seems like ever since that night, it's been a bond with uh, Robert Gibson. That uh, now, Don't get me wrong. I have a bond with Ricky, too, because uh, Ricky can remember, he tell you, anytime he sees you and uh, Tim Blaze around each other, uh, Ricky Moore, and I always remind you that he leapfrogged my boot. So he calls leapfrog the boot, do it again. He knows I know how to call the spot with him. He knows what I'm talking about, leapfrog the boot. Mm-hmm. And so we'll have to talk about that another time. That's the inside rib on Ricky. Uh, but, uh, you know, I can remember one time where he pinned me underneath the uh, the door of the National Guard Armory in a Falls Count Anywhere match. He pulled the, the armory door over my chest, and the referee pinned me, counted one, two, three. Oh, man. And the crowd went crazy. And, 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 and the inside of my body, my feet was inside the armory, but my from my from my waist up was on the outside of the armory with the referee. And my shoulders were pinned one, two, three, and it was raining. And I remember that night, it was just raining. And he was collaborating with the fans. They, they raised the door to get the referee in there to raise his hand. And I just laid there in the rain while the fans were just loving it, man. Oh, and man, that's a great time. I never time. forget that. So that's just, that's just something I can always, you know, remember as a moment. Me versus Ricky Morton one-on-one, Asheboro, North Carolina in a false count anywhere match, and he pinned me underneath the armory door of the uh, our, uh, National Guard Armory of Asheboro. Oh, man, that is, that is great. I tell you, uh, Ricky, yeah, Rick, Ricky's a trip. And it, it, one of the things I like about Ricky, and uh, I know some of your listeners out here may may know, and Tim, I know you know, but uh, you get in a dressing room with Ricky Morton when he's in a good mood, um, you better watch out because he's, he's going to pull a rib on you. Uh, he's going to tell a joke, and you're going to be the butt end of it. But man, Ricky, Ricky has got jokes. Man, he, he, every time I, I see him, he's got a new one, and he just cracks me up. And, and Ricky is a great guy, and uh, and I, I'm like you, Tim. I've I've got to work with work with Ricky several times. I remember one time I got to work a show with Ricky, and it was by accident because I was supposed to work someone else, and uh, that guy, you know, Ricky, the guy that was supposed to work with Ricky, uh, didn't show up. So I got put in the spot and uh, right place, right mm. time. And uh, man, it was great. And um, and I remember uh, the the ring that the that the that the promoter had rented from somebody uh, it wasn't it wasn't up to par. And I remember getting in the ring with Ricky, and he looked at me. He said, "Brother," he said, "I don't know what's gonna happen." He said, "Either the, fa- the fans are gonna pop, or this ring is gonna collapse." One of the two. And uh, I said, "Yeah." And then uh, you know we lock up and we we do a few spots. And um, and uh, after a couple times, I, I I told Ricky, I said, you know, shoot me in. And he said, are you crazy? He said, if I shoot you in the ropes, you'll, you'll end up on on the back row. So we, it was just funny. And uh, of course, after the match, you know, he uh, come come over and talked to me and uh, and uh, gave me some pointers and uh, told me how how much he enjoyed working with me. And that that meant so much to me because growing up, um, you know, Ricky Morton was my idol, and one of the reasons why I got into pro wrestling. Um, I, I would go to Greensboro Coliseum and see, uh, you know, 15,000 people trying to rip off Ricky Morton's shirt. And I told my dad, I said, when I grew up, I'm going to do, I'm going to be like Ricky Morton. Um, although I didn't get my shirt ripped off, but man, I, I, I you know, I've got to live out my dream in pro wrestling and it's, it's, it's been a great time. Well, that's very cool, man. It's always good. Like, uh, myself, you, you can, uh, live out your dream. So. I lived it out, and I wouldn't take a minute back, no. not one second of it. Back. No, it's it's been a good time. It's been a good time. Well, fans, uh, we, we, uh, Tim, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this week's show. Um, any any parting words? Any 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 uh any uh WrestleCade um uh reports or spoilers that uh you can that, that you can give us for this coming uh up, upcoming WrestleCade in twenty twenty. Not at this point, but I do know that we're working on it hard, and I do know that uh, AML is going to go bigger and better than in 2020. You'll see bigger uh, shows in AML, and uh, 
I look forward to the uh, new year coming up with the uh, Binge Buster show, Tony. It's going to be good. And, and like I said, fans, we're, we're uh, Tim's going to try to get it worked out to where next week we can uh, hopefully get Black Bart on on next either the next show or the oh, show yeah. after. And uh, let, let man, Bart's got some great stories too. And uh, I know uh, at WrestleCade, I got to bring him back to the airport. And man, he was telling me stories about how it was driving down 85, and he was telling me how, you know, uh, there was I won't mention the wrestler's name, but he was saying the wrestler stopped. They 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 stopped and got out of the car to um to use the bathroom, and uh, the wrestler took one too many steps and fell down a, a, a you know a, a gully, ended up in a sewer. Uh, man, that 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 was a funny that, that was a funny story. Um, but man, sure. man, 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 man Bart, Bart, Bart 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 Bart's got good ones. That's for sure. Yeah, he does. He sure does. So check it out on YouTube. Him and Rick Flair. And uh, that's a good one as well. Title match wrestling on uh, YouTube. All right. Sounds good. Well, Tim, thank you for joining us. And fans, make sure you uh, like us on our Facebook page. You download each and each and every episode uh, on your favorite podcast platform. And we look forward to to, uh, to 2020 with the Binge Buster Show with Binge and Blaze. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for another exciting edition of the Binge Buster Show. Make sure you go like us on our Facebook page and download each and every exciting episode on your favorite podcast platforms.